We have the pleasure and honor today to welcome Dr. Tom Palmer from the Cato Institute, who will talk about rights. Dr. Palmer, hello. Hello. It's a pleasure to be interviewed in this forum. We just completed a great seminar here in Germany of the IES Europe and Cato Institute joint project. And one of the main themes, of course, was to talk about rights. What, what do rights do for us in society? What role do they play in a legal system? And what is their moral justification? Uh, one topic that we discussed was this issue of whether there are social rights or welfare rights in addition to others. And the socialist or social democratic mentality has promoted a new generation of rights. So there were originally, the, according to them, civil rights that the classical liberals obtained, right to freedom of worship, uh, right to equality before the law, and so on. The next generation in this understanding is political rights, the right to vote and participate in politics. And their argument is, well, we have a new generation of rights, social rights, rights to health care, education, housing, counseling, and so on, a whole range of positive benefits that will be delivered to us by the state. And one of the uh, issues was, is that a completion or complement of the system of rights, or does it in fact undermine them, these third generation rights? The theorists of third generation rights very openly admit, and here I have in mind people like Joseph Rez and Jeremy Waldron, they openly admit that this kind of right will generate conflict. That is to say that the rights will be in conflict. Your right will conflict with my right. That's not the case of the classical approach. The right to freedom of religion doesn't conflict. You can enjoy your religion and worship as you wish, and another person wish worships as he or she chooses. There's no conflict. The right to life does not, certainly under normal circumstances, come into conflict. But these third generation rights generate conflicts on a regular basis. They cannot all be fulfilled. And as Jeremy Waldron from Columbia University put it, in a defense against the classical liberal criticism of this, he said, look, this is only a problem when we consider whether uh, a situation which we try to take all the rights together. In other words, when we live in society, when we live under a common government. It's only then that it's a problem. But the odd thing is, that means always, because that's what rights are for, is about living together with other people. So he says it's only a problem always. I didn't find that a very good response. And in addition, uh, he says, well, it's a question of whose rights will be fulfilled. And he says it's an, just a question who the lucky individuals will be whose rights will be realized. To me and to many others, that means that they have abandoned the concept of rights. They don't believe in rights anymore. Rights are something that I stand on, that I can claim and insist on. But if it's just a matter of who the lucky person will be who gets these rights granted by the state, well, we know how that works. If you don't do it on the basis of rights, it will be done on the basis of patronage, power, corruption, family connection, tribal membership, uh, religious connection. There are all kinds of other reasons. If you look at a country like uh, Congo, for example, under Mobutu Sese Siko, uh, it wasn't an accident that he was the one who got all of those wonderful uh, medical treatments in France and Switzerland. It was not just an accident that he was lucky and got that. That's the way systems like that work. And even in the more benign welfare states of the West, if you think about a country like Canada, which is basically a free society, but has a very rigidly state-controlled medical system, allegedly to give medicine as a right to the people. But the consequence is long queues, endless waiting lists, lines. If you want life-saving medical technology, you have to go to the United States, unless you're a politician or a family member of a politician. And then, well, you go to the front of the queue. So th to say that this is just the state realizing a right to medical care, I think is foolish. It's a waiting list so long that in many cases you don't get the care you need until after it's too late. And then in addition, it is, 
that even in Canada, which is a country with very little corruption and a very, very fine place, even in Canada, there are political preferences. You can be sure the Prime Minister does not get into the same queue as a bus driver or just a normal citizen in Canada. So uh, the gist of the discussion was that these so-called social rights undermine the rule of law, undermine a rights governed legal order, and are incompatible with liberty. Dr. Palmer, thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.